In this video, we're talking about the limit comparison test. So I'm talking about comparing two different series, and then I have prior knowledge that one of these series converges or diverges. And what I'm trying to do is prove that some new series converges or diverges. So if I look at a ratio of the terms of the two series, and I take the large n limit of that, and it settles down to some finite number L, then both series are going to converge or both series are going to diverge. There's a couple other little parts to this too, where if Bn is a convergent series, and I show that the limit of An over Bn goes to zero, well, that's kind of a way of saying the terms of An are smaller than those of Bn. And if Bn converges, then yeah, An is going to converge too. So there's that case. This happens occasionally. And then the third case, if I know that, that the sum of the Bn's diverges and the limit of an over bn goes to infinity well that's a way of saying the terms of an are basically bigger than those of bn so an is going to diverge as well by far the most typical way to use this test is number one where i look at a ratio of the terms look at the large n limit if it settles down to a finite number they both converge or both diverge all right let's apply this to a couple examples so in the first one this kind of reminds me of geometric series, like a 1 over 3 to the n would be a 1 third to the n. It would be a geometric series. And same with the, the 2 to the n. And I know that each of those would converge. Unfortunately, by subtracting the 2 to the n in the denominator, I'm making each of these terms larger. So there's a danger that this might not actually converge. So I'm thinking to myself, in the large n limit, that 3 to the n is going to be so much bigger than the 2 to the n that this series essentially becomes 1 over 3 to the n. And that's how you decide what to compare to. So I'm going to compare to that. And I can get myself in a jam if I do this in the right order. So basically what I'm saying when I take the ratio of these two terms is what would I rather have? A 3 to the n over 3 to the n minus 2 to the n? Or would I rather investigate a 3 to the n minus 2 to the n over 3 to the n? And the second one is way easier to deal with because I can just divide both terms in the numerator by that 3 to the n. So I'm going to take the ratio of these in that order. I'm actually taking these terms, 1 over 3 to the n, and dividing by these. When you divide by these, you multiply by the reciprocal, obtaining this expression. So now let's get the large n limit. If that settles down to a finite number, then both of our series either converge or diverge. Um, so I'm going to simplify as I do this. And 3 to the n over 3 to the n is just 1. And then I end up with a minus 2 to the n over 3 to the n. And I could write that as 1 minus 2 thirds to the n. So I have some number less than 1 raised to the n power as n goes to infinity. Well, that part's going to go to 0. And I get 1. So now given that 1 over 3 to the n is a convergent geometric series, we conclude that our original series converges as well. In the second example, I have again something that reminds me of a geometric series, like a one-half to the n, but there's this annoying little correction there. We've subtracted n in the denominator. That makes each of these terms bigger than those of the geometric series, and so there's a legitimate question as to whether or not this is going to converge. So I think about in the long run, as n becomes very, very large, which one of these terms is going to dominate? And 2 to the n grows way faster than n. So that denominator is essentially becoming 2 to the n as n becomes large. And that's how we choose our comparison. We compare to what we think this thing essentially becomes in the large n limit. So I'm going to compare to 1 over 2 to the n, which, by the way, could be rewritten as 1 half to the n. And that's a convergent geometric series because the r is less than 1. So again, I have a choice. How do I want to take the ratio of these two terms? It doesn't matter which way you do it. As long as it comes out to a finite number, it means that doing the ratio the other way would come out to a finite number as, as well. But one of these is going to be algebraically a lot easier to handle. So actually what I want to do in this case is take these terms, the 1 over 2 to the n's, and divide by the ones in our original series. Because when I do that, I'm going to get the 2 to the n minus n in the numerator which is a heck of a lot easier to deal with. All right, so I have the ratio of the terms in the two series. I'm taking the large n limit of it. So I'm going to divide each term in the numerator by 2 to the n. And the 1 isn't so bad to deal with. 
But then I have to investigate the limit of n over 2 to the n. And that is an indeterminate form. Now, with some experience, you'll remember that exponentials grow so much faster than something like n that that's going to win and this limit's going to go to 0. But if you want to prove it, you're going to have to use L'Hopital's rule to do this. So I'm going to do that as a side note over on the left. And we had a theorem telling us that if we had a function on the real numbers that generated the terms of a sequence when we evaluated it at integers, then the limit of that function as n becomes large is the same as the limit of the sequence. But it is key here to talk about a function of real numbers because I'm trying to use calculus on this, and in particular derivatives, and you can't do that with a discrete list of points. So this is an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. L'Hopital's rule says you can differentiate the top and bottom separately and obtain the same value for the limit. So I get a 1 in the numerator and then a natural log 2 times 2 to the x in the denominator. So this now unambiguously goes to 0. The numerator is just a constant. The denominator is growing to infinity. So back to what I was doing, I was trying to get the limit of the ratio of the terms of these two series, and that comes out to just 1. The piece that's 0 is that second piece we just investigated. So that comes out to 1. Because that's a finite number, and the series we were comparing to was convergent, we're guaranteed that the series we're investigating also converges.